All right, good afternoon again, everybody. Hopefully we've got the sound fixed. I'm not quite sure what happened there. So let me know if it's okay. Uh, I'm sorry, the had some glitch on the sound, so I'll just review things from where we are. Today's topic is IVF, how many eggs should I expect? And as I briefly discussed before the, the sound went out, the expectation depends on ovarian reserve. And ovarian reserve is an important concept to let you know what the potential of the ovary is, how well it might respond to fertility drugs. And it's very helpful for us because it basically uh, uh, allows us to try and figure out the best dose of medication to get an ideal response. So, you know, initially, what's an ideal response for an IVF stimulation? 15 to 20 eggs is the sweet spot, basically. Uh, that produces a, a good number of eggs for a cycle of treatment. It doesn't predispose the patient to excessive risks of hyperstimulation. And uh, that's what we try and get on every patient. So patients that are older that have diminished ovarian reserve, we use higher doses of medication to try and compensate for the resistance of the ovary. Sometimes it's successful and sometimes it's not. And so just because we would like 15 to 20 eggs doesn't mean we're going to get it. And uh, the ability to, to produce that many eggs is really dependent on the state of the ovary. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, we do everything we can to, to, to get the correct dose, the best dose of medication to start with. But the bottom line is it depends how the ovary responds. So the things that go into determining ovarian reserve, again, are uh, asking you how old you are, the uh, younger, the more responsive in general the ovary is, although there are some women that are young that have very resistant ovaries and occasionally women that are older, let's say over 40, that have uh, very sensitive ovaries. Uh, AMH, anti-malarian hormone value, obtained on any day of the cycle, uh, preferably a number between two and four is, is a normal range. Once it gets over five, usually indicates polycystic ovaries and a uh, over response can be expected. And when the values get, uh, you know, under one and a half, uh, we usually try and compensate with higher doses of medication to maximize response. FSH on day three, along with estradiol is also helpful uh, uh, in some patients. And if the FSH is elevated, that's a, a, again, another, another sign of an ovary that's not gonna respond as well. During stimulation, uh, we can look at the ovary uh, at baseline and look at antral follicles. After four days of medication, we assess how the ovary is responding, adjust the dose of medication, and then at the time of HCG, when the eggs are released for ovulation uh, and timing of egg retrieval, we can kind of get a pretty good idea of what to expect. And in general, any follicles, which are the lakes that you can see on ultrasound that contain eggs, any follicle that is 15 millimeters or greater, most likely will have a mature egg present. If the follicles get really big uh, and they're, they're over you know, 23 millimeters in size, occasionally you might get what's called a post-mature egg. That's one that developed uh, uh, exceedingly fast and we weren't able to get it because in order to get the majority of the eggs to be in the right spot, we had to let the leading one necessarily go over the hill. And then you have a lot of follicles that are 12 to 15 millimeters, and we try and get eggs out of those too. Uh, we often will get eggs out of some of those follicles, if not most of them, but a higher percentage of those eggs are gonna be immature eggs, basically. So prior to deciding to proceed with egg retrieval, we can get an idea of what to expect. And uh, based on the number of follicles that are in that sweet spot of 15 to 22 millimeters. And with that, we proceed and get the eggs, basically. Eggs fall into either mature, which are the good quality eggs capable of fertilization, post-mature, which is very few of them usually that are over the hill, and immature eggs that came from usually the small follicles. Uh, the benefit of having more rather than less eggs is that uh, irrelevant of how old somebody is and irrelevant of whether you get pregnant on your own or you get pregnant with IVF, 
a certain percentage of these embryos that form uh, are either going to be uh, uh, euploid, which means they have a normal chromosome complement, or aneuploid. And so in order to get somebody pregnant, it's not necessarily the number of eggs that matters, it's the number of acceptable embryos, normally genetically tested embryos that are euploid. Because if you're making 10 embryos, but nine of them are abnormal, we only have one embryo to work with. If you're making three embryos and one of them is normal, we still have one embryo to work with. So it's not just the egg that matters, but also how many of them fertilize, how many continue to develop, and of the ones that do develop to what's called the blastocyst stage on the fifth or sixth day of embryo development, are they normal or abnormal from a genetic standpoint, meaning are they euploid and have the correct number of chromosomes, or aneuploid where they have an abnormal number of chromosomes. The rate of aneuploidy is age dependent. Uh, in women that are under age 30, 70% of embryos that form are normal. In women that are over 40 years old, 70% of embryos are abnormal. When you get up into the 43 age group and above, about 80% of embryos will turn out to be abnormal genetically. And abnormal embryos, if they form naturally or in an IVF arena and were transferred, most commonly uh, just don't continue to grow. You get a negative pregnancy test. If you do get pregnant with an abnormal embryo, it most likely will miscarry. And occasionally you end up with a Downs baby or something like that. So at age 40, only one in a hundred live births are Downs related, uh, but you would avoid that with uh, almost in 98% of cases uh, by doing embryo biopsy, making sure the embryo going back is, is normal. So what happen, What decisions do we make when we're looking mid-cycle? Uh, we usually will proceed with egg retrieval. We can kind of guesstimate if asked how many eggs might we expect. Uh, if someone's producing too many eggs, we sort of uh, modify the trigger protocol to release the eggs to minimize the risk of hyperstimulation. Uh, if it's uh, an average amount as expected, that's fine. If it's a low amount, we usually have a discussion and go, you know, this is a real suboptimal amount of, of, of follicles, but what's too few? If, you know, someone is 44 years old and is on a maximum dose of fertility drugs, and as a result produced only three follicles, where we might get two or three eggs, that's all they're going to produce. So unless one's willing to produce, uh, you go to a consideration of a donor egg, there's not much we can do to significantly change the formulation if we're already using a maximum dose of drug. On the other hand, if we have somebody who we expected to have really good ovarian reserve and unexpectedly just had a really poor response to a low dose of medication, in that patient, we may want to say, okay, do we want to retrieve these eggs or do we just cancel the cycle and try a different combination or a higher dose of meds to proceed? So. The decision making depends on the circumstance individually with the patient. Uh, and most of the time we get around what we expect to get, occasionally uh, we don't. Once we do an egg retrieval, we know how many eggs are mature, those of eggs that are capable of being fertilized. We know if they're post mature, meaning that they're sort of over the hill or they're immature, which means they just didn't reach that stage. And when you look at the follicles on stimulation, you find that they're different sizes and it's, it's uh, the follicles don't all develop exactly at the same rate. And that would be ideal if it did. You'd like to have all these follicles and eggs lined up shoulder to shoulder, so to be in a parade. But more often than not, you get a, uh, a discordance in growth over time and you have a couple of leaders and a couple of stragglers and then everybody else is in the middle. And what we're hoping for is what's called in math, a skewed bell curve so that most of the follicles are in this sweet spot of 15 to 20 millimeters. And we may lose the leading follicle that grew to 26, but by waiting an extra day, we gain five that were 13 that are now 15 or 16 millimeters. So that's the decision-making process that we go through during stimulation 
to try and maximize uh, the number of good quality eggs that we're going to get. Now, having a bunch of eggs sounds nice, but having a bunch of normal embryos is a lot better and means a lot more. And that's because of the aneuploid rate. So if, if you have somebody who, let's say, is older and has 15 follicles, and of those, we wind up with four embryos, but the expectation is that only one in five is going to be normal, then you may have one, possibly two normal embryos, but we can sometimes get no normal embryos. Whereas you have 15 eggs and somebody who's 33 years old, it's pretty rare to get skunked on that patient and not have any normal embryos. So uh, at the end of the day, the equalizer is the normal of embryos that we have, not the number of eggs that we have. And when you're producing a limited number of eggs because you have diminished ovarian reserve, one has to keep that in mind, both on the expectation of what am I going to get once these eggs fertilize and we look at the embryos, uh, but also uh, at the end of the day, we've had patients to produce two follicles, we get one egg, they're 41 years old, and it's a normal embryo. And the reality of it is that a genetically competent euploid embryo from somebody 33 and a genetically competent euploid embryo from somebody 40 has the same chance of working, basically. And anytime you transfer a normal embryo into a normal uterus, you would expect around a 50% pregnancy outcome. So that's the whole story in a nutshell. It's not an exact science. We can often predict an idea of what we might get. Uh, we always try and not focus on the actual number because at the end of the day it's the number of embryos that count not the number of eggs and in particularly in patients who uh, uh, are responding uh, as best they can to the dose we're giving them there's not much we can do to change it then we got to go with what we get and uh, you know we counsel patients who produce very very few eggs uh, about the concerns that we have uh, but we don't necessarily cancel a cycle unless uh, it's mutually decided that that's the decision and the direction that the patient wants to go through. So I hope this information was helpful. Uh, again, have a good week and a good day. Stay safe and uh, please ask questions as we go through cycle and uh, happy to answer them as we go. Take care and have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.